Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be making a salicylic acid toner and salicylic acid moisturizer. These two paired together make a perfect regimen. It's great for battling acne or you can even target ingrown hairs or if you have some scarring you want to fade away. Salicylic acid is a wonderful ingredient. It's tricky to work with. These are advanced formulas, but I hope you guys enjoy. So let's get into it. So the first product we're going to be making is the easier one. This is the salicylic acid toner, and I tried to make this as simple as possible, so I used as minimal ingredients as possible. So we're going to be making a 200 gram batch, and we're going to start with phase A. I'm going to begin by adding in the salicylic acid. So salicylic acid is a BHA, and it does help exfoliate the skin and unclog pores, so it's an amazing ingredient, but it's really tricky to work with, and you need to make sure you're keeping the powder actually dissolved and suspended in the formula, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. So I'm first weighing out 4 grams of salicylic acid, and also salicylic acid is a drug regulated ingredient, at least here in the United States, so you want to make sure you're following whatever regulations your country has with salicylic acid here in America. It's regulated as a drug, so you need to get it approved by the FDA if you're selling products with salicylic acid. And then I'm going to be adding in some propendiol, and this is the solvent that's going to help keep the salicylic acid dissolved in the formula. And propendiol is also a humectant, so it does help hydrate the skin as well, so it's offering benefits there too. It's extremely similar to glycerin, it just has a lower viscosity, and it's not as sticky as glycerin. And I'm going to be adding in 20 grams of the propendiol. And I'm just going to mix the two together a bit, and the salicylic acid won't dissolve, but it'll like kind of, it'll look cloudy and it'll look like it dissolved slightly. And then we need to add in some polysugamols D9. This is a solubilizer, so it helps mix a little bit of oil in with a bunch of water, but in this case, it's actually going to be used to keep the salicylic acid dissolved in the formula and keep it suspended throughout the formula as well. Without it, the salicylic acid will just end up recrystallizing. So you do need this, and I'm going to use 10 grams of it. You could use a polysorbate like 20 or polysorbate 80 instead of it, or Tegosol 61 or Sunflower Solubilizer. Any other solubilizer will work. And then go ahead and mix everything together and place it in a water bath. So you just want to heat it and mix it as it heats until the salicylic acid dissolves, and this doesn't take long at all. So while that dissolves, let's work on phase B. And I'm going to start with a 10% lye solution. So the lye I'm using is sodium hydroxide. Make sure it's sodium hydroxide, not potassium hydroxide. And I dissolve 10% sodium hydroxide in distilled water. And you need to do this in a really specific way. I have a video actually explaining how I did this. I will link that video down below. It's my video, How to Make Glycolic Acid Toner. And in that video, I show you exactly how to make this sodium hydroxide dilution. So I will link that video down below. You do want to make sure you're wearing like gloves and a mask and do it in a well-ventilated area. And you always want to pour the sodium hydroxide into the water, not the other way around. So make sure you really are paying attention to the directions when making this. And this is going to be our buffer solution that helps raise the pH. Salicylic acid dramatically drops the pH of this product. So I'm going to go ahead and add in our pH buffer to raise the pH so everything comes out at a good pH at the very end of this formulation. So I'm adding in 8 grams of the 10% sodium hydroxide solution. Then I'm adding in 157 grams of distilled water. And then I'm just going to mix everything together. Now that the phase A, the salicylic acid, propendiol, and polysugamols D9 solution is completely clear, as you can see, you want yours to look like that. Go ahead and pour that into phase B, which is the sodium hydroxide buffer solution and the distilled water, and just mix everything together. And as you can see, it'll be like cloudy at first, but as you mix it, it'll be completely clear. And then just go ahead, place your beaker back on your scale and add in one gram of liquid dermal plus. This is our preservative. You can use any other water soluble broad spectrum preservative you would like, but make sure it's active in a pH between three to four which not all preservatives are, so make sure you get that. Now just mix that preservative in a bit, and you're finished. But before we bottle it up, we want to check the pH to make sure it's accurate. So pour a little bit of your product into a small beaker. I have a 25 milliliter beaker here, 
and then I just place my pH meter into the solution. And as you see, we have a pH of 3.52, which is totally fine. You want a pH somewhere between 3.5 to 4.5 max. Honestly, I really see like controversy in this. Some say that you can have a pH up to 4.5. Some say it needs to be no higher than 4.0. In my experience, anywhere between 3.5 to 4.5 works. I also have a video all about measuring pH levels, taking the pH level, how to lower the pH, raise the pH, all that stuff. I will link that video down below so you guys can check it out. And here is the finished salicylic acid toner. I really, really love this stuff. I specifically have been using it for ingrown hairs and it's done wonders. To use this, just pour some onto a cotton round and then just gently pat to the skin. And then you want to wait for it to dry. Once it's dry, you can add your moisturizer on top. So you can use this all over the body. You can use it on your face if you're suffering from acne or you just want some good exfoliation. Both of these products are great for all over. So now that we know how to make the toner, let's make the moisturizer. This one's even more advanced, so let's get started. So here's the formulation for the moisturizer. If you didn't know, I do have a Patreon, and over on my Patreon, I post blog versions of all my videos. So you can actually go over to my Patreon, sign up, and print out this recipe so you can have a physical copy of it. And I also post two exclusive videos on there every month. So I have lots of content over there if you guys wanna go check it out. So I'm gonna make a 100 gram batch of this moisturizer. And I'm starting with phase A. I'm adding in 61.8 grams of distilled water. And then again, we're adding in some more of the 10% sodium hydroxide solution. This will help raise the pH since salicylic acid drops the pH. And I'm adding in four grams of the buffer solution. So just mix that in a little bit and then set it to the side. And now we can work on phase B, which is the oil phase. I'm starting with Montano 68 MB. This is our emulsifier. So this is what's going to be blending the oil with the water. And you specifically want to use an emulsifier that is active in lower pH levels, which this emulsifier is. So you can't use emulsifying wax NF or root emuls SCG like I typically do on my channel, but I do have some substitutions over on my Patreon where I post blogs for all my recipes and always include substitutions. But in this recipe, I'm going to add in five grams of the Montano 68 MB. And I will have all these ingredients linked down below for you. And now I'm going to add in some subtle alcohol. This is an emollient, so it helps moisturize the skin. It helps thicken the moisturizer as well. And it's also a co-emulsifier, so it helps stabilize the emulsion. You could use satiral alcohol instead, betanol alcohol, or any other fatty acid or fatty alcohol. And I added in four grams of the subtle alcohol. Now I'm going to use some olive squalane. It's like a plant oil, but it's a lot less greasy and less heavy on the skin, which is why I chose this. So this moisturizer can be used on any skin type, um, but you can easily use a plant oil instead of this or a different emollient ester if you would like. And I added in 10 grams of the olive squalane. Now I'm gonna add in some bisabol oil. I'm sorry if that's not how it's pronounced. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> but this is an awesome ingredient. It's oil soluble, but it's extremely soothing on the skin. And it also helps with the healing process of the skin. And it can even help penetration of other ingredients as well. If you don't have this ingredient, you can just easily leave it out and replace this with some more oil or water instead. Um, you don't need to use it. I just added it in because it's a soothing ingredient and I have sensitive skin and I use two grams of it. So now that both phases are complete, let's cover both of them with some foil and we're gonna place them in a water bath. Just fill a pan with a little bit of water, turn on the heat and let both phases heat to around 70 degrees Celsius, 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Let it get to that temperature and let it sit around that temperature for about 20 minutes in order to help stabilize the emulsion. So while those are heating up, we're gonna work on phase C. Phase C is the salicylic acid phase. So I'm gonna be adding in two grams of the salicylic acid. And again, I'm using propendyl as my solvent and I added in 10 grams of it. And I'm just gonna mix the two together. And again, it's not going to fully dissolve until we heat it up. So place phase C in the water bath as well and just mix it as it heats and the salicylic acid will dissolve pretty quickly. In the meantime, 
I'm going to take this watch glass. I will link down below to where you can buy some watch glass. I get comments about these all the time. Love them. They're great for weighing out ingredients. And I'm going to weigh out some xanthan gum soft. You want xanthan gum soft specifically. This xanthan gum is far superior than any other xanthan gum and feels the best on the skin. So I weighed out 0.2 grams of the xanthan gum soft. And this is going to act as an emulsion stabilizer. So this is phase C that I'm holding here. As you can see, the salicylic acid has dissolved. So now I'm going to go ahead and pour the xanthan gum into phase C. You always want to mix your xanthan gum with like some propendiol or glycerin first. So that's why I'm adding it to this phase. Usually we would just go ahead and add it into the water phase, but in this case, I'm doing it a little different. All right, so now that phase A and B are all heated and ready to be emulsified, pour the water phase, which is phase A, into phase B. Don't do it the other way around. And then immediately mix with your immersion blender. And you want to use an immersion blender, not a hand mixer. It won't work. Then after you give it a few mixes, go ahead and add in phase C and then mix with your immersion blender again. And you want to come back periodically and mix it as it cools. But once it's thickened, that's when you know you can quit mixing it with the immersion blender. So here's what the viscosity looks like now. You don't want to mix it again. You just want to wait for it to cool down under 100 degrees, which mine is good now. So now I can go ahead and add in the cool down ingredients, which is phase D, and that includes 0.5 grams of liquid dermal plus, which is our preservative. You can use any other water soluble broad spectrum preservative you would like, as long as it's active in a pH between 3.5 and 4.5. And then go ahead and add in 0.5 grams of vitamin E. This is an antioxidant. It's always great to add an antioxidant to all your products. Vitamin E is great for your skin, so it'll add lovely benefits to this product. And then just go ahead and mix that in. And if you're worried about the vitamin E affecting your color, you can lower the percentage of it. Now we want to test the pH to make sure the pH is okay. So add a little bit of your moisturizer into a small beaker. I'm using a 20 milliliter glass beaker. I placed in my pH meter and the pH is right around 3.97, which is perfect. We want it anywhere between 3.5 and 4.5. Now I'm going to cover my beaker with some plastic wrap and let it sit until tomorrow to see how the final viscosity looks. So here's the final viscosity. It honestly didn't thicken up too much. Usually they thicken up more, but I've noticed formulating moisturizers with salicylic acid, you get some really thin emulsions. Normally a moisturizer like this would be pretty thick, but I'm thinking the salicylic acid just makes moisturizers thinner. There's not much I can do about it, but I will continue to experiment with it to try to get a thicker salicylic acid moisturizer just because, you know, I want to figure it out. But yeah, so here is the final viscosity. It's very thin, it's lightweight. It feels wonderful on the skin. It rubs in so quickly. There's no soaping effect. So I think you guys are really gonna like this. It'll be great for any skin type and it's great for all over the body. So those are the final two formulations. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I know this is more advanced, but I've been doing a lot of beginner's content lately and I know a lot of you guys love salicylic acid. It's a great ingredient. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, but yeah, leave a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Someone to